Hey everyone, it's Intel here, and in this video, I'm going to be using and reviewing the Rocat Cone Pro as well as the Cone Pro Air. Rocat is a pretty big name in the Minecraft community, especially when it comes to bridging and drag clicking, but I'm going to tell you guys right now that this mouse is amazing, not just for bridging, but for Minecraft PvP as well. I'm also going to have another YouTuber and a friend of mine, Digital Smiles, give his thoughts on the Cone Pro later in the video. He's insane at telebridging and god bridging with this mouse, so make sure to stick around for that if you're interested. I do want to say really quickly before we get started that if you guys want to help support me as a creator, then make sure to check out my Lunar Kiss in the Lunar Client store. I just re-released my ghost cloak not too long ago, and I also have a brand new matching ghost bandana, so if you guys want to help support me in making these types of videos, then make sure to check out the link in the description below. But anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So here it is, the Cone Pro and the Cone Pro Air. I do have to say before I get started that Rocat sent me both of these products to review, as well as a little headphone stand, which I appreciate. The Cone Pro and Cone Pro Air are large, ergonomic, lightweight gaming mice. They're both essentially the same mice, but with only two differences. The Cone Pro Air is wireless, and it weighs 75 grams while the Cone Pro is wired and weighs 66 grams. The Cone Pro is a little bit lighter and it's a little bit noticeable and I prefer the weight of the Cone Pro, but even with that being the case, I still prefer the convenience of having a wireless mouse, which is why I still prefer the Cone Pro Air. The unboxing for both mice is pretty standard, but there's two things I want to mention. First of all, I like how they include extra mouse skates in the box, I think that's really nice. And then for the second thing, for the Rocat Cone Pro Air, they actually don't include a wireless extender like mice like the Glorious Wireless Mice or Logitech Wireless Mice have. It's not a deal breaker, but it is pretty inconvenient because that means if you want to charge the mouse with only one USB port, you have to unplug the wireless receiver from your PC instead of unplugging it at your desk, which is way more convenient. Not a deal breaker, but I definitely think they should have included this in the box. So let's start off with the shape. So the Rocat Cone Pro uses a large right-handed ergonomic shape, but it's actually a very unique shape. It's much different from other ergonomic mice like the Glorious Model D or the Razer Death Adder. The whole right-handed ergonomic aspect of this mouse is a lot more subtle and it doesn't feel too far off from ambidextrous shape mice. As someone who typically means ambidextrous shape mice, and ambidextrous means symmetrical by the way in this context. Getting used to the shape of this mouse didn't take nearly as long as getting used to the shape of something like the Razer Death Adder or the Glorious Model D. Overall, I like the shape of this mouse. I like how the mouse buttons are wide so you can fit multiple fingers on them if you want to. I do have mixed feelings about the sides of the mouse though. How the sides of the mouse are shaped is really important because it dictates how you grip the mouse, and in Minecraft PvP, having a comfortable grip on your mouse is really important when it comes to your aim. The right side of the Cone Pro is fine, it's wide and it's pretty much flat. The left side though is very curved and has sort of a concave shape to it. For the mouse to feel comfortable to grip, it sort of forces you to grip it more towards the front because that's where it's the least curved. As someone who mostly fingertip grips, I usually tend to hold my mouse near the rear, and that isn't really comfortable with this mouse because at the rear, the sides curve out way more and it's sort of awkward to grip. It's not the biggest deal in the world, the shape still is more comfortable to me than a lot of other gaming mice, but the curved left side does limit where you can grip the mouse comfortably, and I'd much rather prefer it if it was just flat. So let's move on to the build quality. Both of these mice feel extremely robust and nice in the hand. There's no flexing or creaking, and the materials feel pretty nice, so this mouse does feel like it's made to last. The Cone Pro does have a rubberized coating to it that naturally grips to your fingers a little bit, and that does make it good for drag clicking, which I'll talk about a little later in the video. The Cone Pro also has white 100% PTFE mouse skates. They're really smooth, and I honestly don't see any need to change them out for third-party mouse feet, which is great. The stock cable on the Cone Pro is also pretty light and flexible, which is a really nice thing to see. As I said before, the Cone Pro weighs 66 grams, while the Cone Pro Air weighs 75 grams. This gives them a medium to lightweight heaviness, which is perfectly comfortable for Minecraft PvP and bridging. Let's now talk about the clicks. The Cone Pro uses optical switches, unlike most other gaming mice which use mechanical switches. There's benefits and downsides to optical switches. The main benefit to optical switches is that they have usually a lot higher durability than mechanical switches and are a lot more reliable, and they also have a slightly faster response time than mechanical switches, but I doubt that most people will actually be able to notice that. The downside to optical switches though is that they don't feel as good as mechanical switches, at least the optical switches that I've tried in mice. The clicks on the Cone Pro are super light, which I do like a lot. However, the clicks aren't really that bouncy, and because of that, it sort of gives the clicks sort of a mushy feeling, and because of that, I can shoot or click pretty fast on this mouse, which is nice, but in game modes that require you to constantly be clicking, like boxing for example, I do feel like I run out of stamina a little bit faster because the clicks don't feel as bouncy as something like the G Pro Wireless Super Light. That isn't to say that the clicks are bad for jitter clicking, because you can jitter click on them pretty well, but I think I would have preferred mechanical switches like the ones that Rocat have used in the past in their other mice, or if they found a way to make the optical switches feel a little bit more bouncy. The Cone Pro and the Cone Pro Air have an adjustable debounce time slider in their software, which goes all the way down to 0ms, and when you set it to 0ms, these mice will double click. Butterfly clicking up to 20 CPS isn't a challenge with this mouse, and I really do like both of these mice for butterfly clicking, because the clicks are super wide so you can fit multiple fingers on them, and I can aim well with the shape and weight of the mouse, so this is a super solid mouse for butterfly clicking. Drag clicking is also 
really easy on this mouse. You don't need grip tape because the coating has some natural grip to it. When I first started bridging with this mouse actually, I thought the coating was a little bit too grippy, so I actually applied masking tape on it. Masking tape is less grippy but does have a little bit more texture to it, and I personally prefer it for god bridging. And here's some clips of me god bridging with the Cone Pro. As you can see, god bridging with the Cone Pro was not hard at all for me. I do want to reiterate that you don't need tape to god bridge with this mouse. In fact, most people that I do know that own this mouse don't use tape at all and they're perfectly fine with the coating that's on the mouse. I've just always preferred masking tape for bridging and it's just personal preference for me. Overall, I'm really impressed by the build quality of this mouse. The clicks are decent, I do wish they were mechanical instead of optical, but the clicks aren't a deal breaker for this mouse at all and they're still perfectly usable for every clicking method. So now, I'm gonna let Digital Smile share his thoughts on the Cone Pro. Hello Intel Edit viewers. I'm going to give my opinion on the Rocket Cone Pro. If you don't know, I like drag clicking and I'm on bridging servers like MCPLG or Bridgerland all the time practicing gold bridging, tele bridging and even speed tele bridging which the Rocket Cone Pro or Cone Pro Air is perfect for. This mouse is good for everything that has to do with drag clicking including reducing, bridging, clutching and stuff like that because of the insane CPS you can get and also the consistency. Here's a clip of me getting 189 CPS on the Cone Pro. Unlike a lot of other drag clicking mice, the Rocket Cone Pro is very light which I honestly really like about the mouse. Some people say that the mouse will move while god bridging because of this, but if you just press down a little bit harder, it will be no problem at all. And if you don't hold your mouse or god bridging like me, you can just put the back of your hand on the mouse, which helped me a lot. Also, you can just leave the stickers that are on the mouse feet there when you unbox it, which makes it even easier to keep the mouse in the same spot while god bridging. But a lot of people forget that the mouse is not only good for drag clicking, but it's also really good for other things like Bed Wars and other PvP game modes, or even different games. Unlike something like the Bloody A70, which is in my opinion only really good for drag clicking. For PvP, I single click butterfly which is very easy on this mouse and if you're one of these people who likes to double click butterfly, you can get above 20 CPS very consistently if you do it right. I'm not a jitter clicker but I'm sure Intel has talked about that already. So overall this is a great mouse, I especially like how it has a debounce time slider in the software so you can choose if the mouse can double click or not, which every company should do in my opinion. Also the drag clicking texture of the mouse is pretty good and I can actually do it no problem but you can always use tape if you want. Anyway, that's pretty much all I had to say about the mouse. If you're still not subscribed to Intel Edit, I think it's about time to do so. Anyway, peace. Okay, so all in all, if you're looking for a mouse that's pretty much good at every skill set that Minecraft has to offer, so whether it be bridging, PvP, aiming, clutching, whatever, the Cone Pro and the Cone Pro Air are some of the few mice that are genuinely good at all of those things. They are definitely some of the best well-rounded mice for Minecraft. The Cone Pro isn't the only mouse in this category, however. There's other mice like the newer glorious wireless mice, like the glorious Model D wireless, which I recently reviewed on my channel not too long ago. This is another mouse that's also a really solid recommendation for me for everything when it comes to PvP, bridging, clutching, aiming. I definitely consider both of them because they're both really good. It all boils down to what shape you like more, what switches you prefer, and the minor features that are exclusive to each mouse. If you want me to do a more in-depth comparison between the Glorious Model D Wireless and the Rokat Cone Pro Air, then make sure to leave a comment down below. And also, I do think that for purely jitter clicking in PvP, which is what I do, I still prefer the G Pro Wireless Superlight a little more because it has better clicks for jitter clicking and I like the shape more, but the Cone Pro isn't bad and unlike the G Pro Wireless, it's a super well-rounded mouse for every skill set that's in Minecraft and not just jitter clicking. I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you stuck around till the end, I really do appreciate it, it really does mean a lot to me. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Rokat Cone Pro and the Cone Pro Air. I'm excited to see what you have to say about it. Massive shout out to Digital Smile for being a part of this video, make sure to check his channel out in the description below. And once again, if you want to help support me, then check out my Lunar Client Cosmetics in the link in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.